Hello, this is uh, Jay Rodman again. I'm here playing another decently played game. Uh, this is Load Runner's Rescue. This is for the Commodore 64. And um, I'm not going to play this honestly, like the way that someone might play it if they were kind of making a challenge for themselves. For example, if I screw up a level a whole lot again and again, I might edit that out. Because the point of this is not to show how good I am or challenge myself. The point of it is just to kind of show a game that I think is a f interesting or stand out or at least fun to look at. Um, whereas, uh, and it's just not fun to watch someone screw up all the time. Anyway, so this is a, the, the loading screen, which is obviously cracked. And press place to start in the right window. And uh, this is a game that's clearly ripping off a popular game. So Load Runner was a popular game, a 2D, collect all the stuff and exit the level. Someone else made a collect all the stuff game, and they branded it Load Runner's Rescue. Um, although it has almost nothing to do with Load Runner. <laughs> so there's that. Um, ha there, there were obviously many, many collect games, collect, collect all the things on the level game, starting with Pac-Man or maybe even before, like... There was some Indy 500 racing game where you had to run over a bunch of dots. I don't know, whatever. I'll show that sometime maybe. I'm terrible at it. Okay, but this is a early 3D-ish game. Um, and I'll, you'll, see, you'll see what that means pretty quickly. It has, by the way, some really harsh audio that I will figure out how to process at some point. So, uh, this is the game. It's sort of what we call isometric, although I think isometric is a specific technical thing that this is not. Uh, you play as this girl. Um, the ending point in, I think I have a mouse I can show movement with. The ending point in this level is the little yellow square. Uh, there could be multiple of them. To get through the level, you must collect all the keys and there can be guards that can try to chase you down. In this case, the guard is, um, by the level's design, constrained to only walk in a straight line. I think he can double back if he wants to at other points, but he can't leave this little strip. As it should be obvious, as should be obvious, this is just an introductory level. They want you to see how it plays. There are no tricky bits. Um, the cat, who moves independently, is a bonus. I think it gives you an extra life. Let's check. Yeah, extra life for the cat. There's one on every level. There's this elaborate um, sound off when you get to count up your bonus. Which I kind of, I really like those kind of sound effects. Maybe I'll show you some other games like Wizard that um, take that to the next level. Okay, so here's where we're going to have the unfortunate sound effect. So the, so one of the things I guess I'll talk about first before we get to the unfortunate bit is there's a lot of audio cues and they're necessary because as you will see, this game allows things to be hidden. Uh, like there could be a key back here that we can't see and the game will do that to us. But there's a lot of things in this game about height and um, jumping and falling. So we can go up a height of one. And here we're at height, say, zero. Probably we could go lower than that, but let's say it's zero. And we go one, two, three. And there's tones. So if we couldn't see where we were standing, we could still get a sense of going up and down. Uh, also, we can go up one at a time but we can go down two at a time. Uh, we can't, I can't go up two at a time by walking into the wall. And if you do walk into a wall, you get a tone telling you that you hit a wall in case you're out of view. You can jump up two, but you can't walk down three or jump down three. If you do, you'll die. And I'm gonna save a state. That's, that is not how you store state. That is, Machine reset, I forgot. 
Anyway, um, so you can jump down two, but you can jump. You cannot jump down three. Okay, so here's where we get to the awful audio portion. The water squares all have directionality, so they're going to push me in directions, and I'm going to try to talk over them. Uh, but it's going to be a, a it's a kind of harsh abrasive sound. So um, if I try to swim against the current, I don't get anywhere. But and if I let go of the joystick like yeah, now, it pushes me around. Uh, if you can swim like across the current effectively, and if the current pushes you onto a square, you can get out. But you can't get out at other locations. This this cat was not like there was no dead end, but you can trick it by kind of like it'll turn the corner into you if you do it just right. Now that's one of the first hidden spots in the game, or it is the first. You can see there, I, I came out of the water, um, and you can't see the water, the, the water square that pushes me out. You just, you just have to find it. And it's not that hard to get to find it because if you uh, just kind of let go of the joystick when you're in the water, you will probably end up at that location. So that one isn't that, that that particular one is not cruel, but um, it is the start of a trend. This area is, um, I don't know, sort of like a Pac-Man where I'm just avoiding the enemies while collecting things. There almost certainly are closer analogs that I'm not thinking of right now. Lock and chase, maybe. Radar rat race. So this, the height of this level is three. Uh, it's a little hard to judge at first, but it means we can't get in by jumping. In fact, unless there's a location somewhere on the in the fort that. Uh, can let us get up to height one. We're not going to be able to get into the fort at all. So I'm a little torn on this cat because uh, if you were trying to play well, you would definitely try to catch the cat because it's an extra life. But when the level is completely open like this, um, it can take a lot of time well it's done now okay so here this level I think is designed to make you well I, I'm sure it's designed to make you realize you can jump the guards because here's a guard that would never moves so the only way to get through is to jump him the guards on the inside and the outside are mostly not free in their movement there's a, they have a tiny bit of freedom they can double back a bit uh, I don't know what, if you, if you go into the level editor, this game does include a level editor. You, you, they basically are standing on the arrows. They're on a track. That's the, probably the largest correlation with load runner. I mean, it has a few correlations. It has the pick up all the stuff and leave the level. It has a relatively small number, all kinds of, um, squares that, that can exist. And it has a level editor. That's an extra life noise. So you can jump any distance down if you land in water. And there's also this weirdness that the water can point uphill. And it, it you know, if you, the per editor person puts the water to go uphill, it goes uphill. And that's just the way it is. It's like a little conveyor belt more than water. And we get a strong flavor here of like, we can't tell what's going on. We have to infer because it sure looks like this is going to be water, but then it's land. And you just have to kind of say, well, I seem to be walking on something. And it's not water, so. This is a little puzzly because this is two down, so I can go down it, but I can't go back up. Because if I jump this way, I'll land in the water. Uh, jumps always move forward too. 
Well, whoops. I meant to jump. Um, well, the elevator appeared when I didn't expect it, and it made me step forward without realizing it, so I jumped over the edge. Now, um... It's, it's sort of... A, I haven't really figured out the exact rules for when the guards are willing to climb. Often they do not. Sometimes they do. It may have to do with level design. It may be that most of the levels are designed so they just don't. And some, because you can't always see the keys, sometimes you need to watch the key number to infer whether you're finding everything. A reasonable panic move is to jump like cra crazy. Because at least half, on the flat anyway, because at least half the squares that you're, step, that you're traversing, um, you're not present on. I think I'm done except for, yeah, four keys left. So just that one last tower to go. Uh, this is the first of, um, one of the more actively puzzly levels. So Towers had like a little bit of kind of puzzle, but it was mostly just figuring out the game mechanics. This, um, for example, how far is that down to this, to this right? Well, I could just jump and, spoiler, you'll just die. Uh, so this is one of those levels that rewards kind of only doing things you know are safe. Like, this jump I can sort of see is safe. And I'm experimenting with the water here. I actually know the solution, but I'm... Now, here we have two paths. One of them is up here. But I think that that's the only key. Oh, and this one. And this, this R here is a restart square. If I step on it, it becomes the start square. It's like a continue. And it may not be clear where you could safely jump to the middle, but I can move back and forth here. So that's a distance of three, which I cannot jump across. Whereas if I was to go on this side, I can't move at all. So it's a distance of two. You could maybe eyeball it, but sometimes they start doing deliberate... Cause, because distance front to back and distance up and down are represented the same way and there's no like fundamental depth built into the game so um sometimes they play games where you can't tell how how uh close something is deliberately so what we got left here is this water which i think pushes me back up uh, this is a trick, by the way. If we, if we if we go to the left, it's too far down. But if we drop to the right and then jump back to the left, that's two independent drops. Uh, I think it's time to go get the cat here. This one's not a trivial cat collection. Oh, and I forgot about this defect, this annoyance. Defect is too strong. Uh, the screensaver has no idea about joysticks. I'm almost tempted 
for the sake of recording. Oh, that's right. This cat is... Wow, it goes way back there. That was like 10 or so turns. If you really have the levels memorized, I suppose you know where to drive the cat so that you can get it quickly. Uh, but moving quickly doesn't really help that much. You do get a larger bonus. But not that much larger a bonus. And I mean, I guess you could be going for a high score. Here's a trick, you know, of course, we went... We, we, we jumped over this wall, how would we get back? There's just hidden stairs. Sometimes you have to trust that the level designer is going to do something reasonable. Like, something looks like it's impossible to get out of and it has a key in it? Well, it's not. I've been, if I had been racing through this as fast as possible, I might have gotten to 20,000 points and have one extra life, but... Uh, I guess I just don't care about the score in this game that much. This level always gave me kind of an MC Escher feeling. I, it's not quite accurate, but I have this feeling like I don't know how tall any of the paths are really when I'm not focusing on them and thinking about it. But we're going to get introduced to um, a new element here. That that was a... We, didn't, we actually can't see it very well, but it's a drooping platform. Like, it, it lowered... Uh, what are we going to call her? Let's call her Wendy. I don't know why. But um, it lowers Wendy... Uh, I think that she's named the manual, but I, I don't remember what it is. Um, it lowers her kind of right away, and you can't, you can, you can only react to it very quickly. Um, so, what is required to advance, oop, is to jump over the gap, and you just have to get the distance right and go over. Of course, um, uh, when you jump constantly like that, you skip half the squares. So you have a 50% chance of making it, and if you zero yourself at any sort of known position, like an intersection, that's much easier to memorize than the exact square. Do I have to... Uh, why am I feeling so timid? Jumping over them is... um. A little intimidating but it's a lot easier than it looks and these last two you get by walking you know down uh, but you of course can't get there without coming from the ramp now they can come all the way down which was not initially apparent but they cannot leave the paths. When I left, I left the cat for too late. I didn't get it, although I got an extra life from points. If for some reason you care about kind of clearing the game in a single play, collecting all the extra lives is very important. Um, if you don't, then it's really kind of inconsequential because you can always continue from any level that you die on. Anyway, okay, so we have a new mechanic. We have mushrooms. Mushrooms, when you walk over them, make Wendy big in this a little bit teen growth spurt way. And there's this counter, this this uh, timer that goes down. And when it runs out, two things happen. You lose the height and the mushroom a little bit later comes back. So the mushrooms don't get used up. When you are tall, you can jump over two spaces, so a distance of three in total. Um, you can also 
fall a little bit further than you normally would be able to fall. I think you can fall a distance of three. Uh, it can be disadvantageous because sometimes you need to jump two and you have a mushroom at the time, so you cannot. Uh, usually you can just wait, but you know, if there's a timed puzzle or a guard coming, then uh, you may not have the luxury. Uh, of course, there's a way out of the water if we fall in because the game is not overly cruel. Though some of the levels are a little, a little on the mean side. Oh, I forgot a key over on the left. I forgot to go up on the wall. Some levels are very kind, like this one. Um, almost all the directions you might jump off a wall that would cause you to die, perhaps. Oops. Um, tend to make you land in the water. That might be slightly exaggerating, but uh, they do a pretty good job of that. Or perhaps the, re the real thing that they do is when it's hidden so that you cannot tell what the correct way to jump is. They tend to make it possible. I'm having a lot of trouble getting by this guy quick, quickly, which is essential for doing this puzzle because I have to get there. I am a little frustrated because he keeps he keeps doing the exact worst thing, doubling back in the worst way. Okay. This is the one I forgot before. And now we're down to the last two. I'm going to try to get the last two and finish the level all at once because they have the same path. But it's a little bit of a race. So we'll see. Okay. If you step on the level complete and the cat at the same time, you that counts as collecting the cat. I do wonder what she does with these cats. Maybe she's just a cat lady. Okay, so here's our first example of a level with a lot of hidden keys. So he was looking for the tick. They're at almost every intersection. But I kind of don't like doing the lower part of this level um, first, because then I can't see how the keys are playing out. I'll never know if I have them all. The upper level is pretty easy because in uh, the vast majority of cases, you can jump in almost any direction and that will be something to stand on. And there are basically no dead ends. The lower level, uh, you have much less freedom of movement in general, and there are dead ends. Now, um, the keys, you might say, think something like, you know, this is ridiculous. How could you possibly know where the keys are? But um, pretty quickly when you're trying it, you get a sense that the keys are at almost every intersection. They're not like randomly in the corridors. They're at the uh, hallway intersections. Of course, I've been thinking too much about avoiding the guard, so that's prevented me from paying close attention to where I've been. Also, I did the lower level in two segments, which was probably a mistake. But in the end, it's not very difficult. It looks much worse than it is.
I don't even remember what's next. Oh, this one, I don't remember if there's much of a trick. Uh, sometimes I guess I'm not able to show off the tricks very well because I've already long ago memorized how to not fall for them. There are spots that droop. There are like those little pits that we encountered in the winding path. You can't get across the river without the um, mushroom. And I like to do this, do these ties this way because it's easy to avoid the guards. Yeah, that's, there's an example of a little pit or, I don't know, they're not pits exactly, but I don't have a good word for them. The drooping floor. It's also convenient to get the um, keys between the ties the same way. Oh wow, it doesn't run out? I did not know that. Essentially, that approach makes it very easy to avoid those guards. Whereas, if you just kind of try to dodge them, there's three of them in a relatively limited space. And it can become a bad scene. Many lives lost. I do get a odd satisfaction in games when they have a listing of extra lives, like here. I think this is five extra lives on the top of your current life. And you spend the entire game with more lives than they can show. Somehow it feels like victory. So this is a maze. Some people hate mazes. And if you do, this is probably not a, like an ideal game for you because they're are several mazes. Uh, of course, this maze is kind of a little backwards. As you can see, I'm going down every dead end. And it's essential that I go down every dead end because there's keys down dead ends on this level. Again, it seems like it might be totally unfair to have these hidden keys, but you know, you explore a little bit and very quickly you get the sense of Oh, all the keys are at dead ends. I'll just go to the dead ends. Oh my goodness. I was playing this the other day to try to practice with a D-pad and reliably jumping them and reliably making all these turns was really hard. It was an Xbox 360 D-pad, which as you may know are bad. Uh, mine may be extra bad. It's very hard for me to press right and not also get an up uh, on the one that I have. Those doo -doo 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 are continues in case you didn't know. So if I run into a guard, I don't have to start from the beginning of the maze. And they give us several of them right close together, or two of them at least, close together there, which is a little silly. And there's this funny thing where like, you can see, you can, I can make out details of the maze when they're off the bottom. I... Don't know if that's a technical thing. It's quite, whoop, it's quite strange. Uh, it could be that they can uh, change the Commodore 64 sprites, but it's out of the usual draw area. I'm quite certain it's technically possible to draw in the no draw area, but it might require crazy hacking like the demo scene community does. I don't know, that's a, that's a charitable interpretation, is they were making the play area bigger than normally it would be by doing tricks with sprites. I guess I have to do those same tricks with sprites anyway to get me, my character and the guards to be drawn behind some things and in front of some things. 